today's video, we're switching it up from the normal episode. Usually on this channel, we tend to focus on the advanced player development strategies being used out there today, but we haven't taken a dive yet on one important sabermetric topic. War. No, not that war. Wins above replacement. Before we jump into it, welcome back to another video, guys. If you're new here and you're a coach, player, or trainer interested in learning more about the practical applications of data-driven baseball, you've come to the right place. Join the movement now by clicking the subscribe button down below for more weekly baseball animations. War is an acronym for wins above replacement. It is an estimated value of a professional player's past performance, which answers the age-old question of, what effect does this player have on this team's success? It is displayed as one number, the number of wins that this player's talent in the lineup has contributed to the number of wins that team has gained by having them in the lineup over a replacement level player. This is a number that is tracked throughout a player's season, and even their careers. It's something that constantly fluctuates. It can go up and down, game by game. The simple metric is one of the most important player performance sabermetric stats out there, as it takes into account all different aspects of the game to compare players at different positions, in different leagues, and on different fields, all playing on one level field. Let's take a look at a quick example. Let's say that we have two athletes, player A and player B. Over the past season, player A has accrued a war of positive 4.2, and player B has a negative war, that's right, that is possible, of negative 1.2. This means that player A's performance all around the diamond, in the field, on the base paths, and in the batter's box, has helped account for an estimated 4.2 wins above that of a replacement level player. A replacement level player is any bench player or minor leaguer who would come in and replace player A. We will talk more about how this level of talent is decided on in a second. Player B then has a negative war. What does that mean? Well, he actually has lost his team over one game due to his performance on the field. This is possible, but a negative war is not incredibly common, especially for everyday major leaguers. So then, what is league average war? Your first thought after watching this example may be zero. If you break even, then you are average. However, you must remember that we are constantly comparing to a replacement level player, not the average. So the average war is just around two. But that's an easy answer. The real answer is that it depends. It depends on the year. It depends on the position that that player plays. So to understand why it depends, let's take a look into how war is calculated. Before we draw out the equation for war, let's take a look at this chart to explain where guys rank based on their war. As I mentioned earlier in the video, the baseline for war is that you are comparing how many wins that this player has contributed based on their performance compared to a replacement level player. The average replacement level player is going to have a war between 0 and 1. We can take a step up and look at your role players. This could be a defensive specialist, a lower level platoon player, or a pinch hitter. Their wars are typically between 1 and 2. Then there are your solid players and your good players. These are your everyday guys that see some success on the diamond, and they range from about 2 to 3 for solid and 3 to 4 for above average. Now we are getting into higher caliber players. Your all-stars are going to sport a war between 4 and 5, your superstars are going to sit in the 5 to 6 war range, and your MVP candidates are going to be above 6. This is crazy to think about, that a single player can contribute over 6 wins to their team over a single season based on their production alone. Now let's get into the equation. How is war actually calculated? Well, it's important to note first that the calculation for pitchers and position players is different, which makes sense, right? They add value to their teams in two very different ways. For position players, your war is calculated by this overly simplified equation. The first three metrics here make sense. What is their production like at the plate, on the base paths, and in the field? But what about the next three? Well, your positional adjustment is a constant that accounts for the difficulty of that position. You need this because a replacement level player is not going to be the same from position to position. You're going to have a lot harder time replacing a star shortstop than you are a DH just because playing shortstop is flat out more difficult than being a DH. Then, there's the league adjustment. This is a small adjustment just to account for the difficulty of the league that year. Lastly, is our replacement runs figure. This helps calibrate the scale to that replacement level player number. Then you divide all of that by the total number of runs per win and you get that player's war. Next on to pitcher's war. 
This one is not quite as simple as the position players were. And yes, this one makes the last one look simple, I promise. Instead of listing out this crazy formula and attempting to explain it to you all, I'm going to list out all the factors that are taken into account for pitcher's war. There are a lot of similar factors here, such as the league and the replacement level adjustments, but it also takes into account their role, starter or reliever, and then their FIP, which is an acronym for a widely used sabermetric stat, Fielding Independent Pitching. This is the way war is calculated by fan graphs, and is actually calculated differently by different places. They all come out to be similar numbers, but to keep our scale to the chart on the left, we will talk about only this way of measuring war in today's video. On a side note, if you're enjoying this video and you'd like to see more breakdowns of sabermetric statistics in the future, like FIP, let me know down in the comment section below. One last thing on this, our chart to the left is awesome. It gives us a good perspective on how different players impact their wins and losses but it doesn't always work. For example, for position players and starting pitchers, this scale is going to hold up. However, for relief pitchers, they're lucky to crack above a one positive war. That's actually a really good year for a reliever. Just something to keep in mind if you decide to take a dive on this statistic. Lastly, to give you an idea of how the 2019 season played out, I'll give you the top three producers of war. Bringing home the gold was Cody Bellinger with a whopping nine war. Next was Alex Bregman with an 8.4 war, and in third, of course, was Mike Trout with an 8.3 war. The first pitcher to come up on this list ranked fifth, and that was Justin Verlander with a 7.8 war. So why does war matter? It is one of the only all-in-one statistics out there that pretty accurately shows how a player's performance all around on the field impacts the team's success. It is league, park, and position neutral, so you can compare all of these different athletes on a level playing field on the same scale. It allows us to compare two athletes and have a pretty good idea of who was flat out better over whatever time period you want. You can even compare athletes who played at completely different times. I like war because it is one statistic that is easy to read and simple to understand. Just like this YouTube channel. So is war one statistic that is going to answer all of your player development questions? No. It simply assumes way too many things to be a precise measurement but it can give you a pretty good idea on where guys generally rank based on their past performance. Thanks for watching. If you liked today's video or you just want to support the channel, please leave a like down below. Leave a comment with any questions or suggestions for a future video, and subscribe for more weekly baseball animations posted every Wednesday.